Welcome back to my channel, everybody. So I truly had an amazing experience learning about Karakal Pakistan and the Karakal Pak language. So without further ado, we're just going to jump right into more phrases and more of a historical overview of the Karakal Pak Autonomous Region, in addition to some more basic phrases. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, so a lot of this history is very intermingled with the history of not only the Soviet Union, but the history of Uzbekistan, you know, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about Uz Uzbekistan. So the Uzbek and the Uzbeks and the people of Uzbekistan emerged with their own independent state of Uzbekistan in 1991. So the nation has only been officially Uzbekistan. Uh, for about 30, 31 years, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union. So, as promised, I am bringing a little bit more of an in-depth regional profile of the area known as Karakalpakstan. So Karakalpakstan is in Uzbekistan and it's in the northwestern part of Uzbekistan. Now, the Karakalpak people, whose name translates to Black Hat, and here's the story behind it. So, essentially, all right, the name Karakalpak comes from two words, Kara, or Koro, meaning black, and then Kalpak, meaning hat. So, the Karakalpak people used to wear black hats. And this is a sort of marker of the ethnic identity, you know, so the language is very distinct, but related to Uzbek as we established in our uh, Learn Karakalpak language uh, video. So the Karakalpak language, like the Kazakh language, is spoken across the border and it belongs to the Kipchak branch of the Turkic family. While Uzbek belongs to the Karluk branch, which is shared with the Uyghurs in Western China. So that's where the similarities and differences lie. So this history, this, this region of the world has a very long history of being in autonomous area. So under Soviet rule, it was actually its own Soviet um, sort of separate autonomous region. And then in 1936, it became a part of Uzbekistan, which it remained a part of Uzbe Uzbekistan until um, the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, when Uzbekistan became its own country and Karakal Pakistan actually just became a part of Uzbekistan. It was during this time that the region was probably at its most prosperous. And in the 1960s and 70s, there was a lot of prosperity there because of the access to the sea and the rich, robust, irrigation and fishing life and you know ways to farm and use grain and things of that sort the irrigation from the Amudarya was being expanded one side note about the Karakal hat that uh, the the name Karakal pack or Karakal actually gets its origins is it is made from the fur of the Karakal breed of sheep which originated in Central Asia but the breed is named after the Karakal and uh, please correct me if I am butchering these, these pronunciations, but I'm really trying here because I am really enamored with this language. So uh, Korokol, which is a city in Bukhara province in Uzbekistan. And so that's a little bit more of the background on the Korokol hat that is made of sheep, uh, sheep material, sheep's fur, wool, made from sheep's fur, <laughs> that is wool. So the evaporation of the Aral Sea has been one of the main things that a lot of you know, supporters of climate change and making sure that we're doing everything we can to protect the environment is one of the main cases that they point to. Over the past 40 years or so, the Aral Sea has, you know, evaporated. And so it's, you know, there are these pictures out there um, that you see here that show boats in the in the the sea that are just you know rusted and they're just it's like a a ship graveyard that doesn't have water where you can just tell that there was a lot of you know life in the sea and now it's just evaporated and it looks like a graveyard the evaporation of the oral sea has really made life in Karakalpakstan really 
difficult because so many people depended on the, the, the water as a way of life. Now, Karakal, Pakistan is actually one of the poorest uh, regions of Uzbekistan. So the region is suffering from extensive drought, partly due to climate change patterns, and but largely because the Amu Darya and the Sir Darya rivers are mostly diverted to the eastern part of Uzbekistan. So crop failures have deprived a lot of the folks who live in this region and caused thousands of people to die, and if it's cost them to, you know, have a loss of the main source of income and sustenance and then the loss of potable water has even it created this uh, sort of surge in infectious diseases with folks not being able to have access to clean drinking water. So needless to say all of these economic reasons have been many of these economic reasons are factors that contribute to the desire for an autonomous region to want to remain autonomous because one government is pretty much doing the most and you know they're just taking away you know folks opportunities for livelihood for their to 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 support themselves and taking away their livelihood and so therefore Karakal Pakistan wants to remain an autonomous region. There was a, you know, the protests in, in 2022, so in July of this year, broke out over a proposed constitutional change that would strip Karakal Pak of its autonomy and just make it a region of Uzbekistan. And so then the problem is folks were really upset with this because you're going to be taking away even more rights. And if you can't secede, then you are just a part of a regime. And the president wanted to put in all of these reforms to create a new Uzbekistan. But, um, you know, this isn't something that sat well with the folks of Karakal Pakistan. So the protests were um, pretty deadly you know there was lots of violence and the government in Tashkent sent in forces to subdue the protests and then from there there was an agreement that was reached that this constitutional amendment would not actually take away the autonomy of the Karakalpak region um, and and let them remain as they are so that there is the option for secession. Now here in this quote from the United States Department of State, there was a sort of stance that the United States took on the protests in Karakal, Pakistan, autonomous region in, in Uzbekistan. And this is a press re- statement that was released by um, the Department of State's spokesperson. And it says that the United States expresses its concern over the recent events events in Karakalpak and urges all parties to seek peaceful resolutions to these tensions and to refrain from violence. We express our condolences to the families of those who lost their lives. We also extend our sympathies to those who were injured. We support Uzbekistan's efforts to implement democratic reforms. We call on the authorities to protect all fundamental rights, including peaceful assembly and expression in line with Uzbekistan's international obligations and commitments. We urge authorities to pursue a full, credible, and transparent investigation into the violence consistent with international norms and best practices. The United States maintains a a long-standing support of Uzbekistan's sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity. As of right now, there have been no further protests in the region but I wanted to make this video to present a better understanding of what happens in the rest of the world. I have taken the initiative to teach my little slice of America about the rest of the world and what it means to be a global citizen that means to be curious about the world and so to really have empathy for the people in it and to you know if there's something going on then it's our job as global citizens to truly understand the conflict and to do what we can to just bring knowledge to all situations in a fair and unbiased way. With that being said, I just wanted to present more information about Karakal, Pakistan, and I will be exploring more of the history and language. I know um, I mentioned wanting to get more into the language, but I think the history was so rich and engaging that I spent a lot of time putting in some research around the history of the region. And so I think we'll do that in the next video, but stay tuned for any other 
uh, updates on, you know, as I trek around the world, learning about languages, history, and culture. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you like history, politics, and languages. All right, signing off. It's Ernestine here. Bye, everybody.